China wants to dominate automotive sales, EV sales, but not just EVs. It wants to dominate the entire global automotive market. And it wants to dominate the battery market. And it's doing a pretty good job of putting itself in position to do so. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Fantastic to see you here. If you've already subscribed, thank you. I appreciate your support. And if you haven't, please make sure you do. I'm really trying to get to 10,000 subs. We'll be stoked if you can help me to do that. Now, right now, countries around the world are really stepping up their efforts to fight climate change. Since CO2 emissions are the primary cause of increasing global temperatures, many governments have implemented incentives for the development of clean technologies, including EVs. They are also increasing financial aid for vehicle manufacturers engaging in the production of green cars, such as lower taxes and contributions on production and social security. Now, Sure, China wants that. China wants cleaner air in its cities, which in some places are very, very polluted. But China also wants more money, more capital, and more power. And how does it get those things? By dominating the world's second biggest industry, the automotive industry, and also the first biggest industry, energy. Now, currently China is placed first and fourth in terms of the world's largest battery manufacturers. and it's doing that with CATL, the world's largest battery manufacturer, and in fourth, BYD, the fourth largest battery manufacturer, who is also probably the world's most integrated car manufacturer, building batteries, cars, mobile phones, semiconductor chips, and a range of other parts that go into EVs. Now, although EVs are still pretty expensive for many of us, unless you live in China, and you can buy an EV for 5,000 US dollars for a mini EV, 10,000 or 10,700 US dollars for a mid sized SUV, full EV. Yep, these are real prices. That's BYD's price for its Yen Pro, small to medium sized EV. But if you don't live in China, then of course, right now, in most places, your options are more limited. However, that's set to change very soon. BYD is planning to hit the market globally and hit it hard. Now, the EV market is foreseen to grow to 950 billion US dollars in less than six years' time for a fourfold, maybe a fivefold increase over 2020. Now, I see that as being a tenfold. I see the EV market growing to at least one and a half trillion in six years' time, but we shall see. Now, the Asia Pacific market is projected to be the largest contributor in terms of revenue reaching up to 45% of the total EV market. In the meantime, hybrid vehicles represent a cheaper solution to go green, well, in some cases. Now, BYD is a Chinese EV company that is already benefiting from the Asian market EV tailwind. The Shenzhen-based automaker is the largest producer of EVs in mainland China, and it recently saw sales jump 192% year over year to 41,000. Now, in the first half of this year, BYD supplied the market with 155,000 units, including pure electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid EVs. The number of units was up approximately 155% compared to the, well, the coronavirus affected 2020, where global automotive sales really tanked. Now, looking ahead to full year 2021 and 2022, the company expects to increase its EBITDA and earnings per share on revenue of 29.6 billion for 2021, which is up 23.5% year over year, and 36 billion for 2022, which is up 21.6% year over year. Now, this should give a boost in price for BYD's stock price. As most of its recent results, the company is holding $30 billion in cash on hand and 52 billion in total debt. So it's in a very good position. Now, here is the price chart for BYD's class H shares, which trade under the BYDDF ticker. Now, the share price was at $28 at the time of recording this video for a market cap of $98.7 billion and a 52 week range of $8.58 to 36 US dollars. So you can see it's down a little bit from its highs from its high price earlier in the year. Now here is the 
price chart for BYD's standard American depository receipts, which trade under the BYDDY ticker. The share price was at $56.30 at the time of this video recording for a market cap of 80.6 billion US dollars and a 52 week range of 1760 to 72. The price to earnings ratio is 122.35. The price to sales ratio is 3.05 and the enterprise value to beat the ratio is 71. Now, some might say the price is high, but on Wall Street, the stock still holds a recommendation rating between hold and overweight, indicating that analysts are fairly bullish on BYD stock. Now remember, Although that PE is about 130 right now, Tesla is around about 650. And they're kind of similar companies in many ways. They're both vertically integrated. BYD makes batteries, it makes them down to the cell level. Tesla is attempting to do that. Well, it's doing that in the process of building out that ability right now. BYD makes almost every part for the vehicle. Tesla makes most of the parts of the vehicle. I'm heavily invested in Tesla stock. I've got a lot more Tesla shares than I do BYD, but I'm definitely also invested in BYD. Now, if you didn't already know this, BYD is backed by Warren Buffett. He bought shares many years ago, and he still owns every share he purchased, and he's made a huge profit on those shares. Well, obviously, he hasn't made a profit because he hasn't sold them, but he's done very well out of that investment. Now, BYD has a much higher revenue than NEO, yet a similar market cap, and that, to me, doesn't make any sense. Now, BYD's price to sales ratio is expected to be on par with pure play electric vehicle maker NEO, as per City reports on EV Post. Now, NEO has a market cap of 76 billion US dollars and it posted 3.4 billion in revenue in the past four quarters, implying a PS ratio of 22. Now, in comparison, BYD delivered 27.5 billion in revenue in the past four quarters and has a market cap of 86 billion, implying a PS ratio of three. So you can see that BYD's revenue was nearly 10 times greater than NEO's of over the last 12 months. Now the PS ratio is a key stock valuation metric calculated by the ratio of a company's market cap to its revenue in the most recent year. Now why it matters? Well, BYD is ramping up new energy vehicles or battery powered vehicles in its portfolio and it has much higher delivery volumes than the US listed counterparts such as NEO, XPUN and Li Auto and a lower market cap. Now a city analyst believes that BYD will change that situation gradually or maybe quickly over the next 12 months. Now this analyst expects BYD which is backed by Warren Buffett and Berkshire Hathaway to ship 50,000 and 60,000 new energy vehicles in July and August respectively and, you, and to continue to make growth this year. The brokerage has also forecast BYD's new energy vehicle sales to be 537 vehicles in 2021. In 2022 sales are expected to be 747,000 and 1 million units in 2023. Now I personally believe BYD will hit 1 million battery powered vehicle sales in 2022. One of the reasons I believe that is their, their expansion situation. I've had a look at their expansion situation. They're expanding to Australia, they're expanding to Norway, they're expanding to the UK, and then I believe Europe very soon after. If you look at the price that they can build their cars, they can build their EVs at a cheaper cost than any other car maker in the world. That is extremely important for their growth and it's extremely important for their margins as well. Now, electric vehicle adoption is picking up pace at a rapid speed in China, an insane speed in fact. Just check out my video about just how fast EV adoption is growing in China. It's really off the hook right now. I'll put the link in the description below then you can have a look at it. Now, Citi estimates that China's new energy passenger vehicle sales will be 3 million units in 2021, up from its previous forecast of 2.5 million units. Now, Citi expects China's electric vehicle penetration to reach 15% by the fourth quarter and 35% by 2025. Now, we're already at just over 10% so far. So you can see that Citi's predictions appear very, 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 very realistic and very possible. Now, Citi has maintained a buy rating on BYD shares and it's raised its target price in BYD 
on BYD in Hong Kong by 14% to Hong Kong dollars 327 from Hong Kong dollars 287. Now in terms of US dollars, BYD shares closed 0.1% higher at 60 US dollars at the time. Now you can see that NEO and BYD both have similar opportunities of growth in the market, yet remember, NEO's vehicles are for the premium market, they're priced at a premium price. Of course, that does mean potentially high margins, but it also means that the market is much smaller. And BYD is more of a budget to mid-priced vehicle manufacturer, so they have enormous potential for sales. Of course, the Chinese market is enormous. It's the biggest EV market in the world. But remember, there is 1.4 billion people in China. There's 1.3 billion people in India. And there is hundreds of millions of people in Southeast Asia who all would, be, who all would prefer to buy an EV versus a petrol-powered car. Now remember, in Asia, people don't have the same hang-ups about EV range as they do in the West. In Asia, EVs are perceived as the future, which they obviously are. And people are not so interested anymore in petrol or diesel powered cars because they're perceived as old dinosaur technology. That's true. New tech is an EV, old tech is a diesel or petrol powered vehicle. So you can see this tremendous growth for both NEO and BYD. But if you look at the numbers, right now it doesn't make sense to invest in NEO. They don't have any intrinsic value proposition. There's no intrinsic real reason that you would invest in NEO based on the stock price, based on the fundamentals of the company versus BYD. But you can clearly see BYD has huge opportunity based on its value to further increase that price. I believe many in the West, many Westerners, many analysts in the West, just many people in the West have never heard of BYD. But it's not going to be long before they have. And when they do, that stock price, you can imagine where it's going to go. Now guys, remember, I'm not a financial advisor. I can't give you advice on what you should or shouldn't do. I'm just a guy on the internet telling you about what I do and why I do it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.